Hello, I'm Keith Parsons, and in today's training video, we're going to talk about why marketing ratios do not make for good Wi Fi. Don't guess, engineer. In today's video, we're talking about why you need to use engineering principles more than marketing ratios when you're going to be doing wireless LAN design. To start with, we're going to go back down a memory lane and talk about Lego. Now, I know a lot of you are engineers. A lot of you have loved Lego your entire lives. You've been, you know, in fact, now we have children or grandchildren, and we play Lego with them all the time. When I was young, it was a long time ago, Lego was new, and I happened to live in Norway. And uh, I liked Lego, and so that's what I asked for for my birthday and Christmas, and we had some Lego, and I loved playing with them. And on one day, my mom invited a friend over for lunch or something, and I was stuck with the, the friend's son, and I'm supposed to go play with him. And my mom says, go, go, you know, play Lego with him. You like Lego, he likes Lego, do it. And so we got together and we're playing, and I looked over, and I realized this guy knows nothing about how Lego is supposed to work. Because there's rules. Now, I was still young, just a young kid, probably six, seven. But I learned that there are rules of how you put Lego together. If you break the rules, things don't work. So let's talk about some Lego rules. Let's say someone gave you a set of requirements. And then you were going to use the requirements and use the Lego tools. Now everyone has the same bricks. They have the same parts. And they have the same requirement. We need to make a little house. And inside the house it's going to be 8 bricks wide by 16 long four bricks high, and we want to have a sloped roof on top. So that's what we're told. Now, in the Wi-Fi world, a lot of times we're told we want to have Wi-Fi in this building with this thing, and you get the same equipment. You get to buy the exact same Cisco or Aruba or Ruckus gear, and yet how we engineer a solution could make it either brittle or robust. Now, using Lego as an example, let's look at this design. This is a design my mom's friend's son would have made. And you look at it, they stack the bricks up. Now it's pretty, it has the same colors all the way up and down. But anyone who's built Lego knows if you took this and you squeeze it, it would fall apart in a heartbeat. It's not strong, it's not robust, it is brittle because of how it was put together. Now the exact same parts, same exact parts, could be put together in a different way. Now both of these two Lego designed little houses meet the same requirements. Eight bricks by 16, four stacked high, sloped roof, all of the same things. And yet this version is much more robust and strong. Now you can do the same thing with your Wi-Fi. Instead of using a marketing ratio that says something like, oh, one AP every 2,500 square feet, or one AP every 200 square meters, or whatever the answer is, or one AP per classroom, for the crazy people who want to believe that, it's not about a marketing ratio. What we want to do is learn how to engineer properly. How do you make something robust? We know brittle doesn't work. I've used those Legos before in giving live presentations, and I can take the red and yellow one and squeeze it, and it just, just goes away. Or I can take my 100 kilos and stand on the blue-green one, and it doesn't break. There's a big difference between a robust engineered design and something that's brittle, though it still uses the exact same parts. The answer is engineering. Yes, engineering. We live in a world and we call ourselves wireless LAN engineers. We better act like them. When an architect goes in, he's got his own skill set. But when it comes to structural engineering, they send it off to a structural engineer who does and takes the design made by an architect and runs it through some heavy duty math to figure out is the gap. In fact, I'm, I'm working with an architect tech right now for a house and they had to send our plans off to the engineer. My wife wanted a 20 foot living room. So we engineered it. And then she came back there and said, can we make it out to 24? And the architect said, sure, but we're gonna have to send it to the engineers again because that might change the type of materials or the type of truss versus a glue lamb. It changes a lot of things. It has to do with math. So here's an example. On the right, we have a little doghouse. If you wanted to build a doghouse, it's small, it's easy. You just run down to your local hardware store, pick up some wood. You might have sketched it out on a napkin, 
and you can hammer together a little doghouse. And it doesn't really matter how much engineering you put in because it's not very big. And the wood is stronger than that might have been. And yet if we want to put something not for our dogs, but a barn for horses, it's a much larger situation. And now these trusses that are showing on the left are engineered. They're very much engineered to cover the span, the height, the weight, whether or not there's a snow load that's going to be on it, what's the wind in the environment, do we have to deal with hurricanes, all of that information means, yep, more engineering, more math to make sure you get it right. Little projects are easy. With Wi-Fi, you want to put uh, AP in someone's small apartment, put it in a single AP and it works. Just because a single AP works in a single room in a home does not mean that's the correct answer when you scale up. It's not the same. Just like the doghouse, when you scale it up to a larger barn, we need to put more engineering. Same holds true for concrete. You could just have a couple of pieces of rebar. I spent some time uh, in my early 20s in China, and this is they just they would look down and go, about this big, let's put four pieces of rebar, and that's good enough. The next one down, I was up at the Salt Lake Airport. They were building a new airport structure. And I went and took this picture and I asked them about this and the guys doing the, well, they weren't very happy because the engineer said, you need all of this rebar in this format, this close together because the weight loads that they planned on needed that much engineering. It's different. Two different systems. As you scale, Wi-Fi gets more and more complex. There's more issues and you have to think more about engineering. So, Yes, that means you're going to need more math. Or you just need the software that does all the math for you. So whichever piece of software you're going for, you need one that understands those things. Engineers who do structural engineering or acoustic engineering or lighting engineering or any of the forms of engineering that have to do with the building trades, they have their own software. It goes through and does the heavy lifting on the math for them. We have the same thing in our world. If you want to know more or see more things that are available, head out to Wireless Land Professionals website. We have podcasts, we have blogs, we have all the videos from the WPC shows. Come and join the community.